successful Dana Green, <laughs> who's got news about the very successful Utah Utes. Man, were they successful last night. The Utes are moving on up in the latest Associated Press rankings. Plus, the Real Monarchs play for the USL Championship. Can they bring home the trophy? That's next in sports. Time now for ABC4 News Sports with Dana Green. Time now for ABC4 News Sports with Dana Green. It's not quite the MLS Cup, but hey, a championship trophy is coming back to Utah. The Real Monarchs win the USL Championship, beating two-time defending champ Louisville City. After falling behind 1-0, the Monarchs tie it up, get it to Eric Holt. He one times it past the keeper to level the match at one. Holt had the game winner in the Western Conference Final. This is a guy that comes up big in big moments. Then, just before the half, former Real Salt Lake star Luke Mulholland to Conrad Plua. He heads it in to give the Monarchs a 2-1 advantage at the half. Great pass from Mulholland falling down, and Plua buries it. It stayed 2-1 until the 66th when Noah Powder shredding the gnar, blasted home to give the Monarchs a two-goal cushion, and that's the way it ended. The final three to one, the Monarchs are the 2019 United Soccer League champions. I'm at a loss for words right now. Uh, no, nobody had us in this position except for us. Nobody. Nobody had us here. And in this group, three games in a row, we've gone down a goal, and we came back. I mean, that just shows everything, everything about this team, and I'm so proud of these guys. Well, after crushing UCLA last night 49-3, the Utes move up one spot in the latest AP rankings to number seven, matching their college football playoff ranking. And as well as the offense played last night, racking up 536 yards and six touchdowns, the defense was equally as incredible, holding the Bruins to a measly three points. They forced five turnovers, sacked Bruins quarterback Dorian Thompson Robinson five times. It's now been 14 quarters since the Utes last gave up a touchdown at home. That's three and a half games. The Utes were inspired by comments made by a UCLA player earlier in the week that they were the more physical team. Yeah, it didn't look like it. Utes are third in the nation in total defense. They're now two wins away from another Pac-12 South title. I was excited when we uh, heard that we were going to be up first and uh, 
the whole deal was excited too, and uh, we just laid one on them the first series, and uh, uh, we figured out who was the more more physical team this game. <laughs> really good players. The front four is, uh, I'm biased, but I think it's the best in the country. Uh, linebackers are active and tough and making plays. Secondary's covering. Uh, Coach Scali's getting them in the right spots and the right locations, and his staff is doing a great job with fundamentals and technique, and you just add all that up together, and it's pretty good defense. Pretty good. Speaking of that Utah defense, former Utes defensive back Marcus Williams had a pick six today for the New Orleans Saints. That's his 10th career interception in just three NFL seasons. His first pick six. Williams obviously inspired by his alma mater's performance last night as the Saints beat the Bucks. Well, after missing four games with a thumb injury, Zach Wilson returned to action yesterday for BYU against Idaho State. And it was a mixed bag for Wilson, who hadn't played since September 28th. He did complete 19 of 31 passes for 187 yards and two touchdowns, both the Tal and Shumway. But he was also picked off once and sacked three times. Wilson said he was admittedly a little rusty, but the Cougars got the win 42 to 10. And with two games left before the Hawaii Bowl, there's still plenty of time for Wilson to find his groove again. I mean, it was rough at times. I think, I think overall as an offense, we could be more smooth. A lot of penalties today. I think we got to clean up a lot of things this week, but you know, we got that win. That's all that matters. Oh, he's been gone for a long time, you know, and just trying to get him um, kind of in the in the swing of things. Just kind of get get uh, everything back. It's, it's it's a even though he's been a starter for a lot of games, I think it's just more just shaking the rust off a little bit. Well, Utah State also came up with a big win over Wyoming yesterday to become bowl eligible. And what a game for backup linebacker Eric Munoz. Making his first career start, Munoz, taking over for the Aggies' best linebacker, David Woodward, had two interceptions, including the game clinching pick in the final minute. For Munoz, who's barely played and played for two other schools, he was understandably emotional talking about the game of his life. It's been a long time coming, to be honest with you. Oh. The third school I've been to, um, Redshirt Junior, having to sit behind some guys, it's tough. My parents were there for me the whole way. <laughs> Love them. How do you not feel good for Eric Munoz? We will be right back.
It's November or no snow November? Yeah, it's a lack of snow pack. We haven't seen it, and typically we average seven and a half over seven and a half inches. And here's a look at the last decade, and you can see that we did have some decent winters, but we're coming in at zero halfway through the month. Whew, Alta looks similar. Here's a look at what to expect as you head out the door tomorrow. Those temperatures will be in the 30s, cold in the morning, warming by lunchtime into the 50s with sunshine, topping out in the low 60s, very mild with the warm before the storm. So take your time and be ready for it. Monday's coming, and then the storm arrives on Tuesday for the South. The warm before the storm. I guess that makes us the warts before the sports. I don't agree. But first, an unfriendly <laughs> social media holiday you've likely never heard of. That's coming up after the break. Okay, go ahead, hit delete. I did to Rick Aaron. Today's National Unfriend Day. Ouch. Just kidding, Rick. Jimmy Kimmel declared November 17th National Facebook Unfriend Day to inspire people to tidy up their social media accounts. Experts say that social media use can interfere with your sleep, mental health, or daily responsibilities. So follow me on Twitter at ABC4 <laughs> Rick Aaron. I can't believe you just said that. <laughs> What's coming up next? <laughs> Don't at me. Real Sports Live. Hello at Dana underscore Green. Underscore Green. That's right, Alana Brophy News. What a show we have for you. Wesley Ruff is not here, but the most versatile man in the market, Rick Aaron, is going to join me if he takes his tie off. And we're going to have a ton to talk about. You Utah, BYU, Utah State, the Jazz, the Monarchs. Who knows? Maybe even Alana will make an appearance. It's Real Sports Live. Let's do this. Time now for News for Utah's Real Sports Live. Tonight on Real Sports Live, the Utes absolutely steamrolled UCLA last night, and the college football playoffs are a real possibility. How real? We'll discuss. Zach Wilson is back as BYU blew out Idaho State. The Cougars are now going to be spending Christmas in Hawaii. Utah State pulled out a thriller against Wyoming, and now comes the game of the year against Boise State. Mike Conley made his much-anticipated return to Memphis, but Donovan Mitchell was not happy how it ended. Plus, we're talking buzzer-beating college hoops. How much confidence do we have this is going to be a great show? More confident than I got in myself. And I got a lot of confidence. 
<laughs> yeah, you do, Tyler. It's Real Sports Live, and it starts right now. Hey there, everybody. Welcome to Real Sports Live. I'm, we I'm not Wesley Ruff. He's not here. I'm Dana Green. Wesley Ruff is out, but we are thrilled to have with us a longtime sports anchor. People may not know this. He went over to the dark side to cover news, <laughs> but now he's back for at least tonight. It's Rick Aaron. A one night only appearance, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Happy to be here. Don't know where my, my wallet is. What? Oh, news is where my wallet oh. is. But sports, it will always be where my heart is. He knows that? more about sports than he wants to admit. He knows more than, than Wes or me put together. So uh, Doubtful. We have Don't a lot so. to talk about. Let, well, should we start with the Utes? Why not? You were there last night. They moved up to number seven in the AP rankings after destroying your alma mater. Yes, Rick Aaron is a UCLA Bruin. It was 49-3, to three, Rick. It really was I know. to say which side played better, the Utes offense or the defense. The Utah defense gave up three points on the opening drives and nothing else the rest of the way. You get nothing. Mika Tafua picked up that fumble that Julian Blackman forced and rambled 69 yards for the touchdown to make it 14-3. to three. The Utes blew it wide open after that. Zach Moss, yet another stellar game. 200 total yards and two touchdowns. Tyler Huntley, you know what? He's a legit Heisman Trophy candidate at this point. He completed just 14 passes last night, but those 14 passes went for 335 yards. That's almost 25 yards per completion. Brant Keithy, big part of the offense with a career high, 135 yards receiving and that touchdown. Later, Huntley tossed a little 83-yarder to Samson Nakua as the Utes racked up 536 yards of total offense. They forced five turnovers, had five sacks, Rick, if style points count in college football playoff committee, then the Utes are styling because they won 49-3. to Do you think this is the best Utah team of all time? I got to say, it's the best Utes team that I've seen in the 14 years that I have been here. Of course, they went undefeated in 2008, sure. beat Alabama in the Sugar Bowl. But this is against tougher competition in the Pac-12, and they are just dynamite on both sides of the ball. Offense, Huntley is playing so efficiently, so smartly with the football, oh, yeah. not turning it over, taking care of it, picking his spots. Zach Moss is just a beast. Oh. And that defense is just rock solid. I mean, they look like an NFL defense, especially up front. As my Bruins found out, unfortunately, <laughs> no last night as I sobbed up in uh, Section 19. <laughs> you know, this team does look like it compete with the big boys. I think they can compete with LSU, with Ohio State, with Clemson. They have the physicality to match those big, those big name teams. And Huntley, 74% of his passes that he's completing. He's third in the nation in passing efficiency. They don't turn the ball over. And that defense, led by Bradley and I, Lecky Fotu, and the secondary with Jalen Johnson and Julian Blackman, I don't think there are many teams in the, in the country that can compete with them. Now, will the committee see that or will the disrespect continue for the Pac-12 and not even give the winner of the Pac-12 championship game a shot in the college football, football playoff? I think whether it's Oregon or Utah, they deserve a shot. Well, you mentioned that one big hurdle that remains in their way. They're going to beat Arizona in Tucson oh, next Saturday. Them. They're going to destroy Colorado yes. at home in the home finale, but then that Friday night oh. in Santa Clara, California, here on ABC4, right. the Ducks and the Utes that's going to be a big one, and uh, Oregon is pretty tough. They're not all just flash and dash. They're playing defense, and they're running the football well, too. They really are, and Justin Herbert, no doubt, is going to be a top-10 NFL draft pick at quarterback. So, you know, that will be the toughest team that they play all year, but I think they've been more impressive than Oregon. Oregon is, well, there were games they put up, what, 17 against Cal? I mean, they only put up 34 against Arizona. I guarantee the Utes are going to put up more points than 34 against Arizona next week. This defense at home, and I only, only have one more home game, hasn't given up a touchdown in 14 quarters. Three and a half games. I've never seen anything like this. It's incredible. And uh, UCLA eating some humble pie <laughs> this Sunday night after receiver you... Ethan Fernea said that the Bruins were the tougher oh, team. Yeah. How'd that go? Well, <laughs> Dorian Thompson Robinson running for his life yeah. all night long. They couldn't block the huge defenders. They were just swarming on right. him. And he responded by dropping the football yeah, a couple of times. A couple of times, yeah. right. So UCLA, yeah, they're not at Utah's level yet, but Utah, Arizona, Colorado, then probably Oregon should be fun. Maybe Lee Corso was right. Maybe they're going to be in the playoffs. He what? said it. How about BYU? Zach Wilson was back at quarterback for the Cougars after missing four games with a thumb injury. 
And the Cougars, as expected, well, they blew out the Bengals from Pocatello, Idaho State, 42 to 10. The BYU defense provided the early spark as Austin Lee picked off a pass from the deflection, takes it back for the touchdown. Another senior, Micah Simon, celebrating senior day with a touchdown on the end around here into the end zone. Sione Finau, who has taken over the lead running back role for the Cougars, rushed for 102 yards in that touchdown that makes it 21 to 3. And as for Wilson, in his first game since September 28th, he completed 19 of 31 passes for 187 yards and two touchdowns, both of them to Talon Shumway. Wilson also picked off once. The Cougars run away with it by 32 points. It's their fourth straight victory as a 2 and 4 season turns into a 6 and 4 season afterwards. They accepted an invitation to the Hawaii Bowl on Christmas Eve. Dana, not a bad place to spend the holidays. I can think of worse places. I mean, they were in Boise last week around Christmas time. Now they're going to be in, in Honolulu. But like you said, this was a two and four team just a month ago facing the prospect of playing Boise State and Utah State. I thought they're going to be two and six at that point. So to be six and four, they're going to be UMass this coming week, seven and four. San Diego State might be a little tough. Um, on the road. On yeah. the road. And maybe, you know, they get Hawaii in Hawaii in the Hawaii Bowl. I think they're hoping they get bowl eligible. You're looking at the possibility of a 9-4 and four season. Hashtag extend Kalani. They were wearing that shirt yesterday. Tom Homo was seen wearing that shirt uh, in the locker room. Kalani Satake has not received a contract extension. I think for the way he's turned this team around, kept them together through multiple injuries, they're going to extend him now. Yeah, all that talk about fire Kalani was a little bit silly and premature sure. because we knew that the schedule was much easier on the back half of the season than it was in the right. front half. And they did pull off the upset, beating Tennessee on the road. Beat now, USC? Beat USC at home and then also, you know, knocked off Boise State. Right. You know, that, that victory is very impressive. So, I mean, they're going to extend Kalani Sataki. I, I don't know how many years or how much or whatever, but is that a good thing for Cougar fans? I mean, do you want to remain as a uh, you know, a seven and five, eight and four independent every year. Well, I was wondering this. Do you think BYU fans would have more fun at a game like yesterday where they're beating up an inferior opponent, maybe not Idaho State, but a Liberty or a lower level team, um, as opposed to playing a Washington and the potential of getting drilled? Well, they played Washington yeah, and, and they, they did drilled, get drilled. And BYU fans left early, so I think BYU fans were having fun last yesterday, even though it was Ohio, Idaho State. Yeah. Well, you mentioned Liberty, and Liberty actually gave them a pretty, them pretty good game. game. That was a bad example. No, yeah, no, no. BYU yeah. does struggle against some of those teams, but six and four, extend Kalani. Extend Kalani. All right, here, Grace. Utah State's still alive <laughs> for a Mountain West Conference title, but just barely a gutsy win by the Aggies yesterday at home against Wyoming, although it didn't start off so well for the Aggies. Jordan Love's pass deflected to Logan Wilson, takes it back for a pick six, but Love regrouped. He hits C.O.C. Mariner on an 80-yard touchdown. For Mariner, that's his seventh touchdown of the season. What a weapon the Utah transfer has become, and man, he's got wheels. Then the Aggies took the lead when Love found Gerald Bright out of the backfield to make it 14-7. to 282 yards passing for Jordan Love, but he couldn't finish the game. A scary moment here as Love, looking for the goal line, takes a hit to the helmet, had to leave the game. We don't know his status for next week's game. Henry Columbia had to come up and finish for the Aggies, but the defense saved the day. Eric Munoz making his first career start with the interception to seal it. The Aggies win at 26-21. Now it's on to Boise State, and Rick, that is going to be the game of the year for, for the Aggies. If they can knock off Boise State and say Air Force keeps winning, they're gonna, there's going to be a three-way tie atop the Mountain Division, and Utah State, is all they would need is an Air Force loss, and they would own the tiebreaker over Boise State and win the Mountain Division. So it's definitely not out of the realm of possibility. Yeah, and it's making that loss to Air Force a few weeks yes. ago bigger and bigger because they would not hold the tiebreaker against Air Force if Air Force goes on to win Continues out. To win, right. That's the head-scratcher this whole season. Was, we, we knew Utah State was going to be really good with Jordan Love, Gerald Bright, and those guys. You can't really fault them for losing on the road to what's turned out to be a pretty good Wake Forest right. team. And you certainly can't the fault them for losing to LSU, <laughs> right, right. for goodness sakes. 
Um, but but the uh, loss to Air Force, a one-sided loss, 31 to seven yeah. at Air Force, and, and then getting blown out by BYU. I was a little bit surprised by that as well. Yeah, and I hope Jordan Love can play in this Boise State game because this is such a massive game for the Aggies. If he can't go, I don't think I like their chances against uh, uh, you know with Henry Columbia. He just doesn't have the uh, the experience that Jordan Love has, and they're going to need to run the ball, and they could not run the ball against Wyoming. Only two and a half yards a carry for Jalen Warren and Gerald Bright. They were able to throw the ball a little bit, but I'm just really hoping, and Gary Anderson had no comment on didn't want to talk about it yesterday at all, I really hope Jordan Love can go. Yeah, I mean, it would be such a letdown if he can't play in, in the, the biggest, biggest game, game of the season, you know, so anticipated right. up there in Logan, so uh, wishing him, get well soon, Get Jordan. well, Jordan, yes. As for the Utah Jazz, well, they were one point away from a perfect week, one Dana. Point. Back on Monday, Donovan Mitchell had 28 points, 8 rebounds, and 8 assists as the Jazz cruise past the lowly Golden State <laughs> Warriors. Can't believe we're calling them that. <laughs> then yes. on the next night of the back-to-back, -back, the Jazz rallied late to beat the Brooklyn Nets at home. Rudy Gobert had the go-ahead put back with less than a minute left. And then on Friday, Mike Conley made a return to Memphis after spending the first 12 years of his career with the Grizzlies. And the Jazz almost pulled out their fourth straight win Donovan Mitchell with 29 that night. He had a chance to win it at the buzzer, but it looked like he got hit on the arm, but no foul called, and the Jazz lose at 107-106. Dana, you've looked at this several times. Yes. Foul or no foul? Foul. All day, every day. And I'll ask you this. Does James Harden get that call? LeBron you know, James? He does. Any superstar gets that call, and Donovan Mitchell should get that call. He said this is the third time in 12 games this year that he's been fouled at the end of the games and he just doesn't get the call. I don't know if he doesn't get the respect from the refs or he's still treated, you know, he, he would be, what, this is his third year in the league that he hasn't earned it yet, but he's a superstar. He should get the superstar calls. That was a foul. But you know what? That doesn't take away from this week or what the Jazz have done so far. Rudy Gobert, you know, he's had an unbelievable season. I looked up his stats. His last three games all this week, he's 28 for 33 from the field. That's 84%. And he's averaging 15 rebounds a game. He had five blocks. He's playing like an all-star. If he doesn't get an all-star nod this year, I'm going to cry. Wow. I will cry. If Live on the air. Get it. Here. Rudy, hold your tears. I'll shed them for you if you have to get an all-star nod because he's playing like an all-star. Yeah, the Jazz 8-4 and four now. Of course, 6-0 and oh at home, just 2-4 and four on the That's road. Right. 0-3 oh, in the state of California. Right. For what that's worth. Well, well they know. beat Golden State. Oh, at Golden that's State. Right. That's right. But they lost to Sacramento plus the Lakers and the, and Clippers. the Clippers. So 1-3 one and three one and three. in the go. Golden State. <laughs> I gotcha. You did. <laughs> I don't do this full time. I'm moonlighting here tonight. Give me a break. That's right. But what do you think of Mike Conley? I mean, he was 5 of 19 in his... Uh, his return to Memphis, that was kind of predictable. I thought he was going to press. Was, they had so much attention around him. Kind of struggled a little bit from the floor. But, man, it was so fun to see how beloved he is in that city. Yeah, and he's getting beloved here. He's had a kind of a rough start shooting the basketball. Right. But when he gets into the flow of the game and he's distributing, playing defense and stuff, he really adds a lot to that team. And he has had his big offensive nights, shown what he's capable oh, of. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He can explode for 25 if he has to. And the thing that really sparked the win over the Nets was the play of the bench. Jeff Green and Emmanuel Moutier combined for 28 points. And that hasn't happened enough this year. They really need more contributions from the bench. But the Jazz are in good shape. They're going to have a great year. I don't think there's any question about that. You agree with that, right? Uh, as long as they don't move all their games to California. Okay, there you go. All right, we've got to take a quick break here on Real Sports Live. Coming up, the Real Monarchs are bringing home a trophy. Stick around for that.
Welcome back to the show. Dana Green and Rick Aaron right here. Congrats to the Real Monarchs. They are the new USL champions after beating two-time defending champ Louisville City in the finals tonight. Yeah, what a performance on the road by the Monarchs who are led by former Real Salt Lake star Hamasin Alave. After falling behind 1-0, the Monarchs get goals from Eric Holt in the 28th minute. Then from Conrad Plua, just before the half, off an assist by former RSL star Luke Mulholland, giving the Monarchs the 2-1 lead. They tacked on an insurance goal on a blast by Noah Powder. So the Monarchs win it 3-1, dethroning the United Soccer League champs. So Dana, only a handful of professional sports championships ever earned in this state. How big yeah, of a deal is this? I think it's a pretty big deal, especially to beat a team that's owned the USL the last two years, Louisville, to do it on national television with a bunch of homegrown players. They had five homegrown players on this team. Justin Portillo, David Ochoa, the young goalkeeper, made five big saves. They think he might be, maybe not next year, but eventually the heir apparent to Nick Ramondo. So it's good to see him to be able to, to raise the cup. But they had three playoff games in this run. They fell behind in all three games, mounted comebacks. So yeah, celebrate a trophy. It's not the MLS Cup, but it's still pretty cool to bring home a, a trophy like this. Yeah, it's not RSL in 2009 yeah. winning the whole enchilada. I mean, it is minor league soccer. They play right. at a stadium out in Harriman, but right. good for them. We'll add to Utah's trophy case like the uh, RSL, MLS Cup, and the uh, ABA Stars there winning it all go. in 1971. Wow, you're going back to the old days there. I like it. All right. And maybe get the, uh, maybe this will inspire RSL to win a, another cup of their own. What do you think? I hope so. All right. Yeah. Next year could happen. Let's talk some college basketball now. I know the season just started, but there's a lot to be excited about. Did you see what BYU did on Friday night? Yep. They went on the road and beat Houston in dramatic fashion. Alex Barcelo had 16 points. Jake Toulson had 14. But this was a wild finish. Houston had a one-point lead, 10 seconds left. Nate Hinton gets the steal, going for the breakaway jam, but he gets called for the carry. Turnover to BYU. TJ Hawes makes him pay right in front of former Houston Cougar and BYU Cougar Dave Rose at the game. Hawes gets the kind Houston bounce and wins it at the buzzer. What a win for BYU, who's now 3-1 and one on the year, and you got to love it for Hawes. He didn't have a great game, but man, what a moment, especially early in the season. People don't remember these games. This is what BYU fans are going to remember. Oh, absolutely. This is a highlight reel moment right there for TJ Hawes and the Cougars, and hopefully uh, they can carry some momentum from this through the rest of the non-conference season. You know, they have the... Uh, the Maui Invitational That's coming right. up with some really good teams over in the islands. And UCLA, then, I think they're going to play, and, and Kansas. We're better in basketball. Okay, <laughs> I hope. It's not like I last hope. night. We just don't <laughs> drop the ball at random. But, um, you know, BYU has a, a tough conference road, of course, ahead of it. Can they match up with Gonzaga and St. Mary's? Gonzaga may be the best team in the nation. Yeah, well, they're number eight right now. They only have to play five more games without Yoli Childs. Yeah. And then he comes back. He's going to make a huge difference for this team. But this is great experience. Experience for some of these guys like Alex Barcelo and Jake Toulson and uh, 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 Colby Lee, one of the big guys down low who might not play as much when Childs comes back. But Yoli Childs completely changes the dynamic of this team. He's going to make them a lot better. But right now, nothing but good experience to, to learn how to win without him. So when he comes back, they're going to be that much better. Yeah, back from that silly suspension. Ridiculous. Yeah. Well, not many people expected much from the young running Utes team this year, but they're 3-0 and to start the season. After Friday night's big victory over Minnesota at the Huntsman Center. Now, this is the first time the Utes have beaten a Big Ten team in a decade. Wow. Timmy Allen led the way with a double double, 19 points and 10 rebounds. Booth Gotch also had 19 points. Those two guys are proving to be Utah's best players this season. And how about the freshman out of Olympus High, Ryland Jones? He had 10 points and six assists. So, Dana. How impressed have you been by Larry Kruskoviak's Utes so far? Very impressed. I mean, first of all, they beat Mississippi Valley State by 94 points. Largest margin of victory against the Division I team ever. The Delta Devils <laughs> from right. Itabena, Mississippi. And you took 93, right? You, you took I, that I, back? I, yeah, you lost by one. Okay. Mm. But this was I didn't realize this was their first win over a Big Ten team in 10 years. Then you go back to, to Michigan back in 09. I mean, they don't play Big Ten teams every year. But still... With this young team, Timmy Allen and Booth Gotch are their best players. They're sophomores, 
Riley Batten, maybe the third best player, he's a sophomore. Ryland Jones, their starting point guard, is a freshman. They're going to have some growing pains when the Pac-12 season kicks in because the Pac-12, pretty good. Oregon's going to be good. Arizona, UCLA, I think is going to be good. So, I mean, they're not going to keep up this pace, but what a great experience to beat Minnesota, a legit Big Ten team at home with this young core. 200th win for Larry Kristoviak as well as career. And they should get better because they just signed the seventh best recruiting class right. in the nation, according to the experts, with a lot of uh, homegrown players from right here in Utah. They're going to well. get younger. Are they going to get better? Uh, they we'll, should we'll if see. the experts right. are correct. Mason Falslev, who's a wide receiver on the Skyview team, just signed uh, with the Utes. So he's going to play basketball for them. So, yeah, exciting times. I mean, they're doing better than I expected for sure. Well, it's no doubt going to be a special season in Logan for the Utah State basketball team. The 17th ranked Aggies got a scare in the first game of the year from Montana State. But since then, they've beaten Weber State, Denver, and North Carolina A&T by an average of 41 points. And this has all been without star center Namiya Keda, who's coming back slowly from a knee injury. They don't want to rush him. Aggies are obviously led by All-American Sam Merrill, but this team is deep. Brock Miller had 27 against Denver. Justin Bean had 18 against North Carolina A&T. And I like what Alfonso Anderson brings to the tempo, table. Then you guys got, you got guys like Abel Porter, Diogo Brito, who do whatever it takes to win. I think this team can win close to 30 games this year. They're going to cruise through the Mountain West. They do have some tough games coming up. They got LSU, they got Florida, they got BYU and the, and the Beehive Classic. So they're going to be bigger tests for this team. But man, especially when Keita comes back, just what Childs is going to bring to BYU. And to me, is Keita is going to bring something special to Utah State. Yeah, they've got a tough one against LSU coming up in the Montego Bay Classic in Jamaica. What's up with all these basketball <laughs> teams going to these exotic locations? Maui, Jamaica? Where would you want to go for the winter? What do you uh, want to I, go up to, to Cheyenne? I, I like sitting right here okay. on this red couch with you. <laughs> I mean, no, it's going to be a special season up in Logan. Yeah. How special is yet to be determined? Because, of course, people measure the season by what you do sure. in March, That's not by what you do right. in November. But right. I love Jim Rats guys like Merrill and Abel Porter. And yeah. They're just scrappy. And Craig Smith got this team to a Mountain West tournament title last year, got into the NCAA tournament. People thought probably that that was good enough, get him back to the tournament. Now they want to see him make a run. And this team has enough talent, I'm telling you, to get to the Sweet 16 and surprise some people. I think if Sam Merrill stays healthy, if Keita comes back as strong as he was last year and makes some progress, this team is going to do some special things this year. Dana Green said it on November 17th. <laughs> All right, well, you've heard what we have to say about this week's sporting events. Now it's time to go inside the press conferences and locker rooms for another entertaining edition of Bites of the Week. Watching ABC4 Utah's Real Sports Live.
watching KBC4 Utah's Real Sports Live. Welcome back. To kick off this week's edition of Bites of the Week, we get a glimpse into the life of a walk-on. Yeah, Utah State linebacker Eric Munoz has been to three different schools, is now a walk-on with the Aggies. And on Saturday night, in his first career start, Munoz had two interceptions, including the game-clinching interception, so he was understandably emotional. Honestly, I was kind of getting choked up earlier. It's been a long time coming, to be honest with you. Oh. This third school I've been to, my parents were there for me the whole way. I love them. They've been behind me the whole way. Um, transferred three different times is tough financially, um, academically, mentally, physically. Really, all ten guys on defense you know, were rooting for me, cheering for me. They were excited to see me out there, so I couldn't let those ten down. I was definitely playing with a chip on my shoulder. Um, like I said, being a redshirt junior, having to walk on after coming from a junior college is tough. It kind of beats on you mentally. You highs and lows a lot um, throughout the season, the off season, and everything. And I pre prepared as much as I could all week. Um, I was in Coach Anna's office as much as I could, watching film, and trying to be as prepared as I could. So seeing the ball, it's kind of like surreal when it's coming right in your hands because it's such a gimme. It's kind of right to me. So it just felt good, to, you know, drop down on it and hit the clock roll. Yeah, it's huge. I mean, we get to go to Hawaii instead of Idaho this year, so that's pretty exciting. Um, you know, but <laughs> my wife's excited about that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, I, but I mean, we still got two more games that you know that are big wins for us that we gotta that we gotta get ready for. But I mean, just knowing that we're we're bowl eligible is, is nice. Yeah, that was fun, and then to get the announcement afterwards and the invite, and then so uh, the guys were really excited about it, and and uh, just. You know, just excited that we could extend the season uh, um, another game and, and have 15 more practices with our team. And then it doesn't hurt that you're going to Hawaii. And the, everybody knows how I feel about Hawaii. That's home for me and, and a lot of family there. So we have a lot of um, members of our church and, and BYU fans in that area too. So it'll be fun. It'll be, be cool to get, get back there. We weren't trying to run it up tonight. You know, we pulled all our guys and just started running the football. Uh, the, re the, thing, the reason we left... The pedal on the or the gas pedal down a little longer than I. As I've watched that Washington State UCLA game several, you know, months or whatever it was, when they came roaring back from down, it was 32 in late late in the third quarter, and so that was the reason why we we kept uh, kept the throttle wide open for for a little longer than usual. After that touchdown, I figured I was like, it should be about 100, so <laughs> close to a career high. So just uh, thank Tyler for throwing me the ball and. Just give me the ball in space, too. How much confidence do you, do you have in these guys? Uh, more confident than I got in myself. And I got a lot of confidence. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait. Oh, wait. Okay. <laughs> Nick Ford, Simi Mawala, and Bradley and I doing the Macarena. Was that the Macarena or the Three Amigos dance? <laughs> I think it was a little of both. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've got to take another quick time out here on Real Sports Live. Yeah, but coming up, we're going to reveal our top high school football playoff plays and show you our BI Blitz Player of the Week. Stick around.
There's just one week left in the high school football season. We've already crowned two state champions. Congrats to Morgan for winning the 3A title and to Beaver for winning the 2A title. Way to go, Trojans and Beavers. Meanwhile, Rice Eccles Stadium was the site for six semifinal games this week, and we were there to cover them. Even though there were only six games, there were plenty of plays making a case for our top play of the week. All right, so without further ado, at number four, Corner Canyon. Taking on low peak, the Chargers scored on the first play of the game. Quarterback Cole Hagen hooking up with Talmadge Hanley, an 80 yard touchdown, 12 seconds into the game. Corner Canyon was on the board and they get the win 34 7. Number three, Dixie and Skyview Flyers quarterback Richie Graff pumps once, lets it go. Tyler Walden jumps up the defender to make the grab, but Skyview wins 49 21. Number two, Pineview clashing with Park City. Pineview running back Enoch Takao breaks one Takao, two Takaos, <laughs> three Takaos for six points, but Park City wins big, 48-21. And our number one play of the week, Tipview taking on Lehigh. T-Birds running back Targi Lamson bounces off the defender, completely changes direction and goes 61 yards for the score. Running away with the ball and the victory, 35 to 7, tip view. All right, as for our player of the week, we get a gun with Orem's five star recruit, Noah Sewell. He had 149 rush yards rushing and three touchdowns and five tackles on defense. American four quarterback Maddox Madsen completed 21 of 31 for 331 yards and four touchdowns. But our player of the week is someone you just saw, tip view running back, Targi Lampson. Talk about a grand Targi. Yeah, not one, not two, not three, but four rushing touchdowns, including that 61 yarder that was the play of the week. See you later. Lamson carried the ball 22 times for 210 yards as Tim View downs Lehigh on their way to the 5A state championship game. And for that, Targi Lamson is our BI Blitz player of the week. Well, we're just about 10 days away from stuffing ourselves to our gills for the Thanksgiving dinner feast. But while we dream of turkey and all the fixings, here's a little treat for you to set the mood. It's the best and the worst. We start with Demon Tabak, who has no idea where the receiver went, completely turns the wrong way, and completely loses him, and he goes for the touchdown. How silky smooth is Memphis guard Ja Morant dropping jaws with that kind of move? Ton of buzzer beaters this week. Charlotte and Detroit, Malik Monk, the fadeaway three bomb as time expires, drills it. Charlotte wins. How about BYU's TJ Haas? The kind bounce on the rim for the game winner against Houston. This is the best buzzer beater. Montana State down two, final seconds. Harold Frey from behind half court is money in the bank. What a shot. Bobcats win. Be afraid. Be very afraid. How about Donovan Mitchell? This is just routine for him. Oh, oh but still pretty spectacular. Somebody should give him a nickname. Spider something? I don't know. It will catch on. Brain freeze by the Spurs. They take the ball into DeJounte Murray, but then he retakes it in. You can't take it in twice. He's like, oh, yeah. Best save on the ice, Pittsburgh's Tristan Jerry sprawling, standing on his head. Makes not one, but two great plays. Check out Atlanta's Trey Young. Goes between the defender's legs, nutmegs him, and scores the hoop and gets fouled. How about some great catches from college football? Ohio State's Chris Olave falling down, somehow hangs on. The guy actually trapped it between his legs. Oh, nice. This is even better. Georgia State defender knocks it down. The ball bounces off the foot of the Appalachian State receiver, not once, but twice, and makes the catch. The defender thought it was incomplete, but now that was a catch. More long shots. Sean East throws it way east, hits it before the halftime buzzer. That's from the other free throw line. Should be four points. The Bulls not exactly playing good team basketball. Wendell Carter slams it off the face of Chris Dunn. That hurt. This must have hurt as well. The not so graceful entry into the stadium. Parachute. And finally, a little wackiness on the gridiron. Keep your eye on that guy. He's the offensive lineman, does a cartwheel. Mid play to try to distract the defense. I don't know, maybe it worked. Who knows? It was a pretty sweet cartwheel, though, and a strange way to make it onto this week's edition of the best and the worst. Lost the football game, won the floor exercises. <laughs> well, we're almost out of time here on Real Sports Live. Still got a few things we want to share with you. It's our parting shots, and they're coming up next. <laughs>
Oh, no. <laughs> 250? Okay. Now, Parting Shots brought to you by Doug Smith Subaru. It's time now for Parting Shots, and Rick, since you've been so awesome stepping in, filling in for Wesley Ruff tonight, you can go first. All right, thank you very much. 14 years ago, a Salt Lake City TV station hired a wisecracking sports anchor who had been working in Yakima, Washington. It was right after the state's three major football schools had made much more important hiring decisions. Utah State had just hired Arizona State defensive coordinator Brent Guy to be their new head coach. BYU had just hired... Their defensive coordinator, Bronco Mendenhall, to replace Gary Croton. And Utah picked their defensive coordinator, Kyle Whittingham, to replace Urban Meyer after a reported bidding war with the Cougars and after reportedly considering offensive coordinator Mike Sanford for their coach. Nobody at the time knew how it would all work out for him, but Guy never got much traction in Logan, going 9-38 and 38 over four seasons before getting fired. Mendenhall had success in Provo, racking up 99 victories in 11 seasons and taking the Cougars to 11 straight bowl games. But Whittingham has been the best of the bunch, accumulating 129 wins in nearly 16 seasons, including the 13-0 team in 2008 that won the Sugar Bowl. A Pac-12 South title team last season, and this year's 9-1 team, that's his best ever. Funny how things have unfolded over the last 14 years. Brent Guy has left coaching for personal reasons. Bronco is having success with Virginia in the ACC, and Whittingham now has his team three wins away from a possible berth in the college football playoffs. I think Dr. Chris Hill made the right choice in outbidding BYU back in 2004, and that guy from Yakima, well, he's still here and he's still having fun on TV. My parting shot is on the absolute chaos that took place in Cleveland Thursday night. By now, everyone has seen the video of Browns defensive end Miles Garrett ripping off the helmet of Steelers quarterback Mason Rudolph and hitting him on the head with it. It was an absolutely brutal scene that not many of us have ever witnessed before. Garrett was appropriately suspended for the rest of, next, of this season and maybe some games into next year as well. But I also don't want to blow this out of proportion. On the field, this was a disgusting act that should not be tolerated. But there are plenty of off-the-field issues that the NFL does not deal with correctly. I'm talking about cases of domestic abuse, which only until recently was largely ignored. Concussions and the way players of the past have been treated with medical claims that have been denied. The NFL has a lot of issues to deal with, and I have to believe what Miles Garrett did was an isolated incident. I hope. I really do hope. Yeah. Big week this week, Jazz. Uh, have two games against Minnesota, including one tomorrow night. High school football playoffs on Fridays. Yep, championship Friday. Three championships. That's right. Given out. Hey, go to our website, abc4.com, download our podcast. Have a great week.